Hey, it's Joe Glassman, Automator. Earlier today, we had a great call. He's a hero member, so he saved 25% off our consulting fees. But he was working through using the ACC library for accessing a very particular element in his um, genealogy tool. And the lessons are really good to just learn and practice into what we went through and discovered and found ways to optimize the search um, ensure that it's going to be reliable and consistent. It, and it differs in every program, depending on what you're using. But the approach that we took helps you understand what you'll want to go through. So Connie was very kind to let us share this with um, you guys. So we thought we'd just uh, have this as some background learning experience. Again, we this was a, a private call where he paid us to help discover for him. So kudos to him for letting us share this. All the data, by the way, in it is apparently open source, like it's it's publicly available. So thankfully, that if that wasn't the case, we could have done this. But I um, hope you enjoy it. Have a great day. That ACC library is built by Descalata. I'll put the link to that up there as well. We have other videos on it, which I'll also try to include here. Cheers. Please like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Bye. Hey, fantastic. Excellent. Hope we can, hope, hope we can uh, solve a problem and create oh. some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes, I'll tell you. Yeah. So, uh, Okay. Let me demonstrate what I'm doing, and then we can absolutely look at it. Okay, let me see. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. On the left, I have uh, the Master Genealogist, which is my uh, go-to app. In the middle is the uh, script that I'm using to process, and then I've got ACV, the ACC viewer up on the right. And... Basically, what I'm trying to do, you see this name, Samuel Alexander. I'm trying to capture that name. And currently, the way I do it is I send a, 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 a function key that clicks on the name field. And it brings up. Let me move this uh yeah. And there's a there's the tag entry screen that it popped up. It was there, there all along. It just in the process of giving up control. Are you still with me? Yeah, I can see it. Hello? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so if I come over here and start Capture. ACC AC mm -hmm. viewer and I can get this element here. Okay. It's thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it comes up with a path for one sixteen right. sixteen six two three. Turns out that that's not you. That varies depending on the configuration of. The master yes. genealogist. That, that, would, that would change, yes. Uh, there's various options for pre preferences in the master genealogist. And so right. uh, depending on which preference you have, you get to the same place, but you have a different path to the element. So right. I would like to avoid using the path. Yeah, in this case, I don't think you will be able to. But here's the thing. Uh, can you hit escape, please? To stop capturing, yeah, there we go. So let me let me have control for a second again. Uh, let me look at this real quick. So <laughs> I read that wrong. Um, Here is the interesting one. This is what we talked about. What I'm looking at is how this is created. And for whatever reason, my brain is reading that in, in, in Australian, like cunt name, <laughs> it's client <laughs> name. But, uh, every time I see CNT, like, come on. Uh, but here, um, so this is being created, um, as you can see, in individual groups, right? So this right here, gives me a whole grouping that has all the data that you want. So that's great. Um, that makes it easier for us. And probably 
we can find this guy pretty reliable, uh, reliably, not only with the path. I don't think the path of that will change that often, but even if you cannot get it with the path, I basically guarantee that if you find an element with that name, CNT name one, it will always be that grouping. That's for sure. I, I can almost guarantee that. That's what I would try. Okay. Well, well, before, next... yeah. before we go on, what I really like to do is garner the information from an entirely different screen. All right. Since I since I developed this, I determined that well, a user wanted it something else, and I found a better way. I think I found a, a slightly better way. So, okay, yeah, I, because you were talking about this screen, I thought that you wanted to do something here. Yeah, but 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 before we move on, let me let me okay. explain the concept because this concept applies everywhere. Right. If the path of what you want changes, this path changes, what you have to do is basically look for what doesn't change. And very likely, this doesn't change. An anchor. This, right. So this is my anchor. As soon as I find that, and I can guarantee that I always find it, I know for a fact that the data that I want is below it. That's where we find what doesn't change, and then we programmatically loop over the data and get what we want. In this particular instance, if what you want is just the name, you very likely can search for um, here, the given, you see this grouping? So I would find a, well, an yeah. element, right, I was going to say an element of type 20 that has this name. And as soon as I find it, I will be able to grab the text input, which is a 42, an editable text uh, field in there, because that's the only one that is editable text. All the others are different. This is 41. This is 46. This is 34. But this one, which is the one that you want, which is exactly what you want, is the type 42. And if I find this group first and I get the 42, I will always get the value that I want, regardless of where it is in the path. It, well, the path can change as many times as you want. Let me let me yeah, help, makes sense. To, to help clarify to make sure you're getting this, Connie. If you were just to look for CNT given everywhere, you really might find that somewhere else, right? Right. But because you're jumping down, you know, you're starting there and only saying, look here, under here for this. That's why right. it's it's far more superior. Is that is that correct? right? That's the game changer part. Is right. That's why it's okay. We, yeah. Yeah. It, it, which is which is the thing. So this name could be many times because look at that. We have client date over here and client whatever. It could be thinkable that this client given might show up in different places in this program. Hey, hey, but I'm finding on. this first, I will get this one first. Is it, this is hilarious because we're literally working on a genealogy tree, right? Right. So Connie, <laughs> yeah. the, the thing is a perfect syllogy. Hey, there'll be a lot of people named Joe or Connie. Right. But right. because you're going down a family tree to a certain spot and only looking under there, that's why it's right. okay that you're going to find the right Joe. Does that make sense? Like it's, it's yes. ironic that we're... And, yeah. and I'm actually kind of like filtering down. I first filter through this name, then filter through that thing. And once I have filtered that, as soon as I find the next editable text, I know that I'm getting the correct thing because I'm filtering down. And this happens everywhere. Whatever you're gonna show me now, that's part of what I'm gonna do. Okay, the path changes. Yeah, how can I filter down to get what I want? That's what I'm, I'm gonna, gonna start do. lower. Right, now, exactly. So so show me the other, the other view and let's see if we can get there. Well, before we go on there, I noticed ACC has a filter thing uh, down yes. at the... Would, that, uh, yeah, that's would that tell me all the unique ones with that name? Very likely. So I'm not sure. I have never used it. I have never actually used using that. I didn't even know that it was there. I haven't seen it. 
So it is, okay, so that's interesting. I don't know what it filters on. It says that okay. I couldn't find it, but, but I, will, I will probably look at that and see how is, so for example, maybe button. Let me see if I search for button. I know that there should be, yeah. So you see all the buttons. So it's probably looking at the type in here. There's a push button, uh, but not at the names. So for example, if I look for a column, I don't think it's looking at the names, which I would suggest him right away. Hey, why don't you allow that to search in the names? Well, it's, it would be slower, I guess. Oh no, there it is, column right, column name. Oh, is it? No, it's not case sensitive. How about CNT? That should give me all of the ones that's have CNT in them, right? Um, yeah, you see that? So at least it tells you more. Oh, sorry. It's because I closed the window that had the word CNT name. <laughs> Can you reopen it? Let's see. Uh, and this is, this is one of the other things that we actually talk about ACC. Why so difficult? Is that the ACC library, um, some items disappear if you close the window. So right. the, the, the ACC library literally cannot see that thing because it disappeared. It's something that, it, it, it's one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you are, um, when you try to find something. Yeah, sometimes you might not find it just because the program literally hid that. And, and, but hold and on. that's, I mean, it, it actually doesn't exist anymore, right? It, exactly. Not, it doesn't really not, exist at all. Right. To save memory, they're like, oh, right. We're going to remove it. We don't have that. Right. Let me see. Yeah. See? So I, I think exist. it's what is telling me that that name is found in this particular window. In this window, because that's the one. So uh, let me give you. Uh, I, I'm not really sure if this tree is being created off of the, well, I think it is off of the pool program. Let me double check on that. Here's so, the other thing. Let me interrupt you for a second, Isaiah. Yeah. I, I don't, and I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. Um, let's say you found that that text is unique, Connie. You're like, oh, I can just use that because it's only listed there. Well, in order for your program to find that, it's going to have to loop through. You see how slow this GUI comes up with the data, right? Right. It's going to have to search each one and say, does this match? Does this match? Does this match? Does this match? No. But if you use our method of jumping down to a position first, you're limiting that yes. search, right? Right. So that's why you still yeah. want to use both. Okay. Look at this. That makes sense. So the, the ACC tree viewer starts off with the main program as its base. That's the reason why it's so slow, because you have a lot of items in there, thousands. And when you close this window, all the items related to that window completely disappear from the tree, so you cannot see it. Oops. And that's and that's part of what makes ACC so complicated, because you're looking for something, yeah, it's not always there. You have to be careful how you search. So yeah, so yeah. if I want the the, if I want that field right here, it doesn't make sense for me to look, start looking at the top of the tree. Like there's so many things that I have to look for. But if I just go to the correct section, so for example, I have to jump in, go to the actual um, form that I want, which could be anywhere. That's the thing. So let me just get it from here so that it's easier. You will see what I mean. Stop construction. Yeah. It takes I, so long. Had... You see you see how long. <laughs> right. So but now I did... yeah. Okay. So so now if I go up the tree up to where the window is, you see this window right here? Yes. If I save this window in an object, right? I save that window in an object. Whenever I search within this window, it's not gonna be as slow because I'm not searching on the full tree. I'm just searching inside this window. See what I mean? And I'm ignoring yes. everything else. So right. basically when we're dealing with ACC, that's what we try to do. We try to limit or 
um, kind of like filter down and I would definitely just filter down on on the uh, on the group that I care about, which is the one from the name, which is, if I remember right, this one right here. That's the object that I would save in an object. That way I can ignore everything else because I'm not going to be searching in these buttons down here. That's what I would do. See? Okay. I I understand the uh, concept. I don't understand. I have no idea what the syntax is. Um. You so you see on your script how you sometimes do the element from path. Yes. It's basically the same thing. Or if you use the find element by name, that's what you're doing. So whenever I tell you, hey, I would find this object first. What I would definitely do is just say um, ACC find element by name. For example, I don't know if it is the ACC or the object is the object, the object of the of the window, right? On of the window, and then I would put the options like, for example, find the name C and T. So name is. Um, CNT, well, this is case sensitive. Yeah, that will find the object that I want, which is the contact info, for example. And now that object right here is already filtered down to just these groups of things. And as it is down to that group, whenever I'm searching for something, it's going to be lining fast because I'm, I, I already removed everything that I don't care about. This line right here kind of like removed everything I don't care about. And now this only contains the elements that I care about. And in this group, then I could again do the find element by name. And I would right away find the one that I care about. Oh, the suffix. Then that would be name. And then it would be uh, CNT suffix, right? Like something like that. And I would get out of that guy, then I need the editable text. That's it. That, that's basically what I'm going to be doing. Um, it's kind of like filtering down until I get what I want. And I know that it's always going to be the same because the names don't change. You see those Correct. those grouping names? Those grouping names are not going to change at all, ever. Now, sometimes the path is better than the names because some elements don't have names. Or the name, like, for example, this one. This grouping doesn't have a name. Yeah, then you cannot search by name. I have to search by path. I cannot do anything about it. I only use the path when I have no way to identify the thing that I'm looking for. And okay. at that point, then I start with the path, but after I start with the path, then I use the names to get what I want. Okay. Because naming is more reliable in this instance because oh, I don't think I... they change that often. No, I, th I don't think so. I... I think if I bring up another, the other right. place that I want it, the other way I want to do it, I think we'll then see the same ahead. name. Show me, show me there. Let's see. Okay, so we come say here a birth a birth window. Okay, mm -hmm. it's still it's still it's tag, tag entry. entry, right? Okay, and and it, it turns out what I really want is this element right here. Oh, That's right. the name. So all right. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So, and you have a way to open in this window easily, right? Correct. That, All that, right. That. right. Okay. So that's actually the person that wants to do that. There's that's their starting point. They select a tag and it brings mm -hmm. up this screen. And now they want to know what the name is. And they also want to know the ID, which is easy. That's that's 65. They wanted to know both of those things. Okay. Now, look at this. This is interesting. This is the label. Look at that. You see this combo box that says CMB label? 
Yes. That combo box is hidden. You cannot see it, but it's there. It's very interesting. You see this box, this red box that is kind of like yeah. out of the way? Yes. That is that is basically a combo box that is hidden from view that you cannot see. But it's there, <laughs> which is weird. And some people do that. They hide stuff from view, but they use it. Okay, fine. But look at this. We have um, the text input right here that gives me the um, the ID. age. Well, the age is. It, oh, sorry. Is that the ID or the age? Yeah, that's the ID. Okay, sorry. So basically, if I need the ID, I just need to find in the tag entry. I have to find the CNT parent child one object, and from that, I will grab the parent which I could then go ahead and find the first editable text. And that would always be my ID. That's for sure. So that path right there, or that way of creating or, or searching, I would find CNT parent and text input. And I will definitely get that all the time. And right. after that, the next text is always going to be the full name with the birth, right? Now, Look at this. In here, we still have a hidden combo box. You see that combo box right here? Yes. That is this combo box right here. I could also capture this information from there. Like I could capture the Samuel Alexander. You see that? Even though it's not visible, it's there and I can access it. So if I don't want to capture this one because it has the text of the year in there, uh -huh. I could capture uh -huh. that one. And it doesn't have it. That's pretty cool. Right. That's what I'm saying. So now the, the problem I have with this combo box is that probably the listing of this might change in different ways. And probably the first name, the primary name is not always the first one. So I wouldn't really trust that. I don't know how they're building this list. Well, uh, yeah. So I would probably go with this one. If you don't have that reverence, and if you know if that's not available, the other one probably shifts up, right? Right. Let's look at it. Up, right. Let's look look at another tag box and see what it changes. Right. Axel. Let's kill this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. now, if you do that, okay, yep. So yep. So it's there. Right. And I think I think those are, I think those are all have the same. Yes, they, they will always have the same names uh, for, for the grouping. So if I hover over this one, I should expect the same name. Because what happens is, you see when you're create. I don't know if you have created a GUI in our hotkey. Yes. Have you? Okay. So you see yes. that when you create a GUI, you assign a variable name to the element. Like, for example, if you have an edit box, you can assign a variable name to that edit box. Correct. That's what that is. This CMB name cell, that is the name of the variable when that combo box was created. That's the variable name that they chose for it. That's it. Oh, good. Yeah. It, it, that's what it, what I would see in there. But as you can see, I would start with this one. I think this one is more reliable because it's only one option. But if we at some point decide to grab the information from the combo box, we can. So let's get it. Let's let's get this at least something that I could use for this one. Okay. So the main idea is no, not that. I want the script, and I would start with a. Uh, let me edit fold all. Where's the fold all? Oh, I think it's in view. Fold. What do you? Ah. Yeah, I just I'm just going to create a new hotkey as a test, right? Okay. This is what V2 or V1? Yes, V2. All right, cool. So now uh, your script is not. And by the way, this information doesn't work. That's what we're gonna um, work on right. right now. Right. So you see element from path here. So let's start with. Um, ACC dot element from handle, I guess. Is it HWND? I guess. Oh, I don't like that. I get the. Um, it's it's suggest. line forty five. Line forty five. Uh huh. There we go. 
Right. And it's going to be always that, right? So that's yes. going to be okay. Okay. So let's start with that. That's the first thing always. We always get the main element always. That means the full window. But I don't want the full window. Now, what we want to do, oops. What we do want to do is now we want to get that tag entry window. That's what I want. So let's start with tag entry is this. Whoops, I put one more. So find element uh, from, from tag. Well, how, that's the thing. Once you get used to the the programming language, kind of like, I'm sorry, the editor suggesting everything that that object can do. Like I, I never learned anything anymore in my life. Can we open the ACC library script file? Should be around. That's so funny. Is this right? Yeah. Like I stopped <laughs> learning because of that. Right. It's like me. Oh going, dear, you're breaking up really bad. If I go to a uh, computer, that's uh, probably it's worthless. <laughs> Same yeah. same thing, right? Of just like, yeah. I think it was it? in the lib folder. Go to the lib folder. I saw the lib in the path there, and then I, I saw the ACC somewhere. Not there. Okay. No, I, I thought that it was there. Um, well, sorry. sorry actually, sorry. It tell, if we go back to the script, it tells us where it is. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. So I, I saw. What I was looking at is Go to the top. here at the top, it says, oh, include library. Okay, so go ahead and open that up. So we're going to open. Here. Can you click on that, please? I don't know if there's a window um, in front of it. Yeah, there we go. And then include, here we go. And then library. I don't, I don't, I don't know how I got there. <laughs> no, that's fine. And the ACC, I guess this is the one, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, so this is the one for V2. And what I'm looking at is for find element. So we have, oh, so you can use the find element by itself. Right, that's one just like that, which I would like to see how it works. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, there we go. So you you put a condition. The conditions in here are objects that for each property that you're looking for, that's what it that's what you're looking for. I will show you in a second. Yeah, there it is. You see, you use find element, and you see here where it says name. You put what the name is the scope, what the scope is, and some of the things you can do with that, but there are many other things that you can do with it, but that's basically what I'm gonna do right now. I'm just gonna say, okay, so I'm gonna find an element, so I was close to it, <laughs> and I could use the by name if I'm just gonna be searching for the name, and right here, what I'm gonna be using is, if I go to the tree viewer, I'm looking for the tag entry. And I know that that's the name usually because here in the ACC, it tells me that that's the name. You see that? So okay, you can right click there, on that. Tag entry. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, remember, sometimes that window is not gonna show up, right? Because if the window is closed, that window is never gonna be found. So I, okay. if I remember right, the find functions, if they don't exist, they're going to be empty. So I would say, if not tag entry, then I would say message box um, tag entry window window not found, for example. And I will return that. And when you're returning a message box, you have to use it as a function instead. There you go. So if I don't find the window, don't do anything else. Because if I try to do something else, it's going to fail. That's what I'm doing. But now, yeah. tag entry is its own object. All right. 
this is its own object. And for that reason, now I can find stuff in it. What I'm gonna find in there is anything that is the, uh, I'm looking for this guy, the uh, client parent. And from there, I want to get the text, the next text. So I want to get the CNT parent. So the find element, this is gonna be name. Um, the name is gonna be CNT parent. Um, right, and then after I find that, I will do a comma because that's the next thing that I'm searching for. You can, if I remember right, I will check right now, but I'll get both, it, like you can, you see how you put the path and it's divided by commas? You right. You put conditions separated by comma. Oh, I don't oh know. Hold okay. On. Hold on, no, 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 hold on. No, this one is not like that. Let me see. I remember the call with this law that we talked about. I don't remember what we were in when we were talking about what you're talking about. Because you said, hey, there's the path approach, and then there's other approach, which they should allow for multiple conditions. I, I do remember. Right. That. And, and, I, and I remember, is and I've seen him doing it. Is it not with the array? But you could just break it. You could break it into one, two steps. Yes, we can. Um, let me see the line. Name something. But what about with the uh, find elements instead of the find element? Is it possible? That okay, one? let me see. Maybe. It, it's kind of weird if it's on one and not the other. But No, so, so at this point, it, again, it's just a condition first. If I put a comma, then it's going to do some parameters, which is not what I'm looking for. But, but how you created, the condition... You created a different way to parse it, I thought, to have multiple. I swear, I remember you guys working through this. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. The, the I'm so is, glad that you had to struggle through it. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, that's yeah. that's that's why we that's exactly the reason why we tell people it's not as simple as you think. Right. 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 It's not, it's not. Um and the, the one other thing is as I'm not using this very often, I tend to forget how it was, but I, I remember. Let me see the line. Oops. Find all. I think this is. Uh, where are the examples, dude? Yes. <laughs> Basically, this is uh, one. Once you start getting these kind of things, like you, you don't find the information that you need easily. Then you start learning. Hey, every time I create an object or a function, I should give a lot of examples of how to use it. Because here, look at that. Oh, an array. I think an array is what I could do. Because you see, well, that's for the or. Uh, let me see. Well, whatever. We will go with one by one, and then later on, I will I will show you how you can do that. Because I know that I have done it. Um, I seen him doing it. So it's just a matter of finding the example of how you can do it. Um. Oh, by the way, you know what? Sorry. We don't have to do all that. Oh, this one doesn't have it. Okay, sorry. Um, in the in the UIA viewer, it has a macro writer that it writes the code for you, and that's where I usually see it. Yeah, I right. just remember what I see it. So, but don't where worry. Was it used? Where was it used though? Because it still has to be available, right? What do you mean? What method was it used on? No, you, you selected the method. It gave you a drop down to tell you what you would use with. Yeah, it turns it. At, we ran it. We found that we couldn't use UIA on this program. It crashed. Oh, right. right. UIA? I'm sorry. I didn't hear that part. Okay. So this would be CNT parent. Oh, it's not me. It's that you have a, a, a hot string for that. Yeah. All right. I see what it is the equal sign. Converts to that. I get it. They just I, I remember it the other day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember him talking about it. Yeah. So now from the parent, we can, oh, or you know what? You don't need to create an object like that. Just put a dot and do the next find element. You can do that because they're objects. 
And now this time, instead of being the name, I don't want to search for the name here. What I want to find is the role being 41. You see that? Now, how did you know that? <laughs> Sorry? Well, because you... I, know that the, I know that the name changes, so right. I cannot use the name anyways. So okay. um, I cannot use that. So I need to use something else. But I see that the first one is a text. You see that? That's a principle. Right. Then the next one is uh, editable text, right? That does row 42. And then we have the next one here, which is the first name, which is what I want. So I want to grab this one first and then grab that. Now, I don't know how the ACC library does this. In a, and the other one in the UIA, I have the um, the type, the, imp, the what? How is it called? The, um, now it's a scroll. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna use that as an object like that, you know, like the, the part, because anything okay. on this side, which by the way, yeah, there it is. So I copy, if I, if I right click on that, it copies the thing. Um, right. Which, yeah, I think it just copies the, yeah, exactly. So I want to find an element that has the role 42, which is the text is, input. Is right? it a so blank 42 or a 40? You need to lose, lose a bit. Just like that. And then that okay. is going to be my, that's going to be what? The ID, ID object. And this ID, I could either show the ID value, I think it is, value. That's actually the name. No, but, well, this one here, that's that one, 65. So oh, that's the ID okay. of the person, right? And now, right. as I have the ID, I can find the next element, which is basically part of what I was saying. You could, uh, and we saw this in here, part of what you can do is that when you're searching for the condition, you can get either the... Um, uh, you can go down the tree with the index. Right. You could, you could, and let me show you what I meant by that. I saw it in the options up here. This is the type of the type of times that I right away talk to Descolada because he, as he has been doing this for you know years, he just tells you right away. You see this here? The index right there. That yes. is find the L, find one element and get the previous one, you see? Right. Those kind of things you can do. Um, so we can do the index, we can do other things, but let's not do that. Let's do it simply first. So this is the element ID. I could just put the value here. Um, we can modify that. And from here, I could also, I will copy this, but this is gonna be the name name and I'm going to be finding that but instead of that I need the, the text so this is 41 41 comma index I think two that tells me okay find the index which is principal here so I'm here right and I say give me all the ones that are text it's going to give me two because there are two of them that are type 41. So I don't want the first one. I want the second one. And that should give me the name. Basically is what I'm trying to say. But right. I'm not sure that will work right away. We will see how that works now. So now that I have the code that I'm trying to get here, um, let's save this. Let's run it. It says exit code, I don't know if it is running. Um, let's hit F1 and see what happens. Oop. That's for the ACE code, sorry. Let me stop that. Oops, I probably didn't want to do that. Okay. 
Ah, I was looking for it by name, but it seems to be that that's not a thing. Okay, then let's do it like name. Here. Name Colin. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Let's try that. Is the script? Oh, there it is. So I got the 65. That's the first one right here. But the other one is black. So I was close. Let's see. So I got the 65, right? Now, as you can see, it took a little while for it to do the search, which is what we're trying to avoid. It's taking a long time. So let's try this. Um, what did it get? It didn't, still didn't get the name. Right. I can see that. Let, let's go ahead okay. and try this. We'll have this. And I think this is an array. Let's see what this is. I'll explain in a second what happened there. So when you use the find elements like this, finds all the ones that you are looking for, but I think it returns an array. So that's why I'm trying to access the first one in the array. Let's see right. what I get. Oh, that's interesting. Let me see. This one is going to be a little bit tricky to debug. So this one has a value. This one right here, well, it didn't fail. So I know that. Uh, hold on. Can we open the ACC, the ACC viewer once more, please? I think if I run this one, it should automatically open it, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's go back to the, um, where is it? This one? Yep. Yeah. Let me double check on something real quick. Because I thought that that was the value. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. That's the name that I want. The value is empty. What I want is the name, sorry. That's why. So now in our script, instead of this, so this code was completely fine. Oh. This code was fine. It's just that I don't want to access the value. I want to access the name because the information was not in the value properly. It was in the name properly. Let's see. There we ah. go. You see that? Now, what we need to do here is um, make it faster. <laughs> right. So we will want to make it a little bit faster. But I think for now, I think you got the idea of what I'm trying to do, right? Yes. Now, this part right here, I know for a fact that we could put it here. I know we could do that. Let me just try it out and see what happens. But let me put an array, put a comma there, put that, and then get the value. I think I can do that. I, I, if I remember right, that was something doable. No, that doesn't work. All right. So uh, I will I will figure that one out, send you a, new, a, a message with that. The speed issue. Well, the speed issue here is in this object, I'm trying to find an element. And after I find it, I will get an object, which I will try to find another element, you see? So I'm doing, I'm right. performing a very um, annoying type of search in which I'm searching, then researching, and then searching and researching. And that's what what the problem is. I could skip the whole thing and just find for roles, all the roles 42, for example, <laughs> like check this out. I could probably just do this, give me all the roles 42 and I just care about the index one. So I think if we go back to, oh, I closed the viewer. Oh. 
I think I could do that. So if I start capturing, get this guy. Okay. I'm wait for him. But one of the things that I'm noticing is either the computer is a little bit slow or the program here is really slow, one of the two. So if I go to the parent, I think I'm finding that, right? Is that where I'm start starting? Let me see. So I'm starting off with the tag entry. I'm from the tag entry, which is this here. I will have one text and the second text would be principal and probably what I'm looking for is, where's the 65? No, what? Oh. What? I, I, I'm kind of confused, hold on. There you go. Uh -huh. But I'm On looking the for input, there was a value of sixty five. Ah, the text input here. Okay, so okay, so there is no other text input. That is only the first one I get. So that's one, and then from there I could get the uh huh. So I would say, give me the first text input. That's fine, and then give me the third text. So this one here could try to say, give me the third text because there's another one here. That could, in theory, work. Uh, and now I have to close this because we have been... And if... Oh, you know, I want to stop it. Save, run, we're here, hit one. Let's see what happens there. Did I hit that one? Yeah, it is there. So as you can see, I can I can I simplified the search a little bit, but there's something else that is going really slow. But I think it's because of the program that we're automating in the sense of how it creates those things is just annoying. But as you can see, that's basically what I would try doing. It, it, this should be stable enough that if you are um it doesn't matter how many times you restart the program. I think that what we're searching for is not going to change. In this case, I'm using an index, which might change in certain situations. So let me copy this. Let me give you this code as well. So let me keep that in. Oh, sorry. I need the name here. So this one is the other way of doing it. And now here, this is the one that I would keep for now. And if you have any problems with that, then revert back to this one, because that way you are not performing two searches. You're just doing one search with one condition. That's it. Now, there but are ways for me to do this in a different way. The only thing is that I don't, I don't remember how to do multiple elements, but multiple conditions at once. That's what I'm going to verify how to do that. But there you go. So as you can see, um, the main like idea, the main idea when you're doing with UIA is filtering down step by step until you get to the thing that you want. And the way how we filter down is we start off with the programs element, and from the programs element, then we find the tag entry window, which is specifically the window that we care about. And in this window is where I'm going to do this. Now, this part right here, I would do it only once in my program. So when the program starts, I get that once. And just check if I have an object. If not, I will, you know, if I don't have, my script will grab these only once and all my hotkeys are always going to get this one object so that it is faster. Because what happens is when I when the script starts, it does most of the work. Then when I'm doing the F1, I don't have to do that work anymore. I just have to find the, the tag entry by itself. And let's give it a go. Let's give it a, a try. So I just do this. 
this is basically the most uh, resource intensive because it has to get the whole thing. You see what I mean? Here, I don't have to get the whole thing. So it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be that resource intensive uh, for our pro for what we're trying to do. And when I hit up one again, it shouldn't just reload the whole object once more. It just performs the search. The search is going slowly just because of other reasons. But um, once we figure out how to do the search as, I'm, as I think it should, then it shouldn't be that, that slow. And actually, can you open another person that is not this one that's tested? Just get sure. somebody else. So let's open up another person, hopefully with a different name, right? <laughs> And we go to one of the tags here, say his marriage. Right. So now I'll hit F1. That is interesting. What would happen when you have two of them? I get the first one only. Do you want to that's get what everybody? I want. Oh, okay. No, I, that's exactly what I want. So I, as you can see I, then. I, yep. As you can got see, little... we got there. Yeah. Yeah, we can pick somebody else at a different time. Give it a go. Yeah. And uh, um, let's get Jane or Frank and say his occupation. And we had F1. Yeah. Now, I'm just displaying a, mes a message box, but you're probably going to use this information in another part of your script. So basically, even though it takes a few seconds to get it, and I, I, I'm relatively certain that it's because of the program, even if the, it takes a few seconds, it's great because you can tell for sure that you are always going to get the right information. So when you're going to use it, it's going to work just fine. You see what I mean? So yep. the, the few seconds that it takes to get it, at least the, the benefit is you know that you're going to get it right. The, the, um, uh, now, let's try this. Can you close the program completely, reopen it, and give it a test and see if we, if it changes when you reload the script? Uh, I mean the the sure. program. Sure. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it to change, but we never know. I think it's probably more likely if I change some of the preferences, but I don't. Okay. I, I don't really want to do that because, well, I can try it. Uh, no, but quick question. Me... When you change those preferences, does that window change? Like, does it get more buttons or tabs or stuff it, like it, that? It can. So, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. I can change one right. of the preferences. File. References. The one that I've had the most problem is this data. Uh, Label just affects okay. how the tabs work. So I'm going to enable that and apply it. Okay. So now, for instance, if I come here, you'll see that these are now uh, selectable items. That's what, what I just turned on. Previously, these were grayed out. And the only thing you had was the values over here. So that was just to verify that the change moving in. So now I'm going to check uh, his occupation again. And hit F1. And it still works. So next, mm. next option is to close it down. Start it back up. Let's look at this daughter. I haven't tried any of that. We haven't tried that. Ooh. 
Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Right, because that's that is not the same tag window name, right? Now, if you go to the tag window that we looked for the first time, right? Is that the same or well I thought, we thought they were this is what we selected before. Let's see. Can you hit the F1? Let's see. Oh, the tag enter window is not found. Um, let's look at the ACC viewer. And actually, I'm looking for by name. That's interesting. And and notice that, oh, no, you have to reload, you have to reload the script because as you closed the program and reopened it. You see that object uh, that we created in number six? Yes. It yes. is not it's not valid any longer. That's why. So that means if you close the program, you have to close the script and reopen it later. That makes sense. Yeah. So now if I hit F1. It should, in theory, give you the it's working. The, it's doing something. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now let's that that's one of the things you can decide that's just a preference thing you can have it so that every time you hit f1 it grabs the current object or you can have it that when the script starts it just loads it once and then you have to restart the script however you prefer it's just that loading yeah. it when you hit f1 it just takes a few a little bit of time yeah i think in terms of overall aspect it's negligible but okay i think there we saw the problem the one of the takeaways today is I didn't know how to do the various conditioning to be able to code in um, ro the so, role. So, yeah. So I would tell you, if you're working with UIA, the most important function, the, the two most important functions that you want to learn are find element and find elements. Those two functions are the most important ones to learn. They all work with an object, as I showed you before, down there. So if you go to line 61, for example. You meant ACC, right, Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, sorry. Um, ACC and UIA both do the same, but that's basically what you would do. You see this key object that has a key value pair that says name and so on and role? Mm -hmm. right. Those, the, the, the property name that I'm using is the one that the list view, the viewer, the ACC viewer, is the same name that is shown in there. So if you open the viewer, can you open the viewer once more, please? Let's run it. So you see on the left, uh, so where it says ACC info, that says yes. property, role text, role, role value, role, uh, name, any of those you can put as one of the parameters and you can have ah. several of them at the same time. You can say that the role is 42 comma and name is that you can, you can, you can mix them together to get a very unique way of searching for something. What I don't remember is how you can give it a path of, Oh, that's the name find elements by path. And then you can give them multiple right. conditions like that one after the other, and it will find it. Yeah, Let's go. that's why. Let's see if we can update that real quick. Because that, that'll speed it up, right? I hope so. <laughs> because, yeah. Um, so basically, here, uh, right. Um, let me see. Let me go back to the program. Let me see the structure once more. Hold on. All right. So what I'm looking for is parent and then the text. That's that's basically so parent and something. And what we did in the script is that we searched for the tag entry here. That's the main, yeah. So here, this is searching through the full window and probably I don't want that. What I want to do is probably filter it down to dot um, find element by path, I guess. And then one of the things that I want to do is the parent like this, 
and then comma, and then this guy right here. And I don't need the index one because that's the first one. I think that's how it works. And then after I have it, then I will put the value in and then let's do this and let's save it, rerun it. Let me make this F2 so it doesn't crash with, with the F1 of this thing. Yes. Oop. What? Okay. Then from here, if I hit F2, uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, it doesn't have that by path. Uh, so I, I thought that it, it was like that, but I, I know in UIA is like that. I don't know if in here it's like that. So it, it's it, something like that. Is it plural? It, elements by elements? path? Let me let me look here. Uh yeah. By path. Oh no. Huh. There is none. So it doesn't have it. That's interesting. But in that case, then whatever we're doing is the best right now. So whoop. yeah, just leave it like that and we're good to go. So okay. there you go. I, we don't need these guys any longer because we um we know that this works and that it doesn't actually change either when you restart or change any type of um, things. But this is really important. This part right here is one of the basics of ACC or UIA. Don't ever try to do stuff if you didn't get what you were expecting because they might disappear. The window might not be there. So always search for the thing, the, the main thing that you want and if it is not there, stop. You can either have a message box, which is recommended just to let you know that it's not working, but don't, don't think that you will always find it because it's not always the case. So always keep that in mind that you have a condition. Hey, if it is not found, hey, let me know or do something else. That's fantastic. I'm so happy. Perfect. You're welcome. There you go. Awesome. I uh, got a little work to do. That the, the uh, name's not quite in the format, but that's easy. Or I may, I may try to get it off of principle one instead, so yeah. I don't have to parse it. But then but, uh, you saw. But then you saw how um, how to do it, right? Then I saw how to do it. The, so, instead of the text, you would look for the combo box and whatever, and so there. Okay. Let's call it a wrap. Awesome.